Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf, joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. Uh, we've got a lot of golf shots to go over today. Uh, we have 10 game improvement models. Some are brand new in 2020, others have been successful in 2019. We're gonna combine a few of them for one big test here. Uh, we're gonna have 50 shots total. We have 10 models, and you can hit five shots with each one. We're gonna go through the data. So um, really a big test here today to kind of test out. And I think, I think 2020 is kind of a big game improvement iron year. Uh, so Thomas, you know, first of all, let's just kind of get into the, the test format here. Obviously, again, five shots, um, you know, one or five shots with 10 models each. Um, how are we going to do this? How is it going to work? And uh, one of the things I like is that you're hitting because you're a robot and you hit every, in the center of the face every <laughs> single time. But uh, give us the information here. This is going to be fun. This is the most amount of golf shots we've done in a test so far. So 50 shots, 10 different clubs. This is going to be a lot, very, very exciting. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to hit five shots with each club. We're going to test with the True Temper S300 golf shaft. Now I'm also holding the AMT White S300 because there's two manufacturers here that we don't happen to have the True Temper S300 shaft. Now this is going to be the exact same profile as a True Temper S300 in a seven iron. AMT stands for ascending mass. Essentially this shaft is essentially designed for your, your longer irons to be a little lighter and your shorter irons to be a little bit shorter. But at seven iron, it's gonna be the exact same profile. So that's why we're testing with this shaft. It's gonna be as unbiased as possible with regards to that. Lie angles all are gonna be standard lie angles for the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. um, there's gonna be a couple of different manufacturers that may be a slightly flatter or slightly more upright, but for the most part, they're gonna be yeah. pretty, pretty similar. Standard length, so 37 inches standard length is what I play right now. And then with the Titleist Pro V1X golf ball. Yeah, and the Pro V1X, a great uh, golf ball to use for a test like this. And once again, you know, the fact that you're hitting these shots is great because you hit it in the center of the face almost every time. It can give us a true look at the performance of each iron here. All right, Thomas, here's the 10 clubs we're gonna hit today. We get the Ping G410, the Titleist T300, TaylorMade Sim Max, Shrixon Z585, the Callaway Maverick Standard, Cobra Speed Zone, Ping G710, Mizuno JPX 919 Hot Metal, Callaway Maverick Max, and the TaylorMade Sim Max OS. It's a lot of golf clubs. That's <laughs> that's get after it. <laughs> so we'll start with G410. Okay. Uh, pretty successful in 2019, obviously, and uh, one of the best-selling ones I know out there as well in the game improvement category. So we'll start there. G410 at 30 degrees of loft in the seven iron with everything standard. Yep. So I couldn't leave this out, obviously. Ping just came out with a G710, yeah. but the G410 has just been so successful in fittings that sure. I'm like, it's a game improvement club, I can't leave it out. Yeah. And you'll notice a couple of different manufacturers. We have a couple of different models to kind of yeah. discuss the differences with. Right, yeah. yeah, there are a couple of manufacturers here in this test that do have two models in the game improvement category released in 2020, so it seems fair to include G410. Yep. Nicely done. Five shots, G410, Thomas. Very nicely done. That dispersion is pretty solid. Um, what'd you think? Yeah, the one shot I left the face slightly open. It was maybe about six or seven yards to the right. Didn't yeah. really have that much curve. I know I left the face open on that one. But those other four shots were very, very good. Yeah. Um, it's forgiving. Definitely looks a little bit larger than what I'm used to playing for sure. Mm. Um, but it, you know, it, it did the same thing every single time. So that's yeah. very important. So what you want out of a game improvement club, it flew so straight. Yeah. It really did. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, Ping, we know, has been so great with game improvement equipment specifically. And yep. G410 delivered in 2019. And it will continue to deliver in 2020. Um, so yeah, that's nothing's really surprising here from Ping for yeah. sure. I do notice a little bit of offset on the club looking down at it. I think that probably helps straighten out a little bit there too, but it's, mm -hmm. it flew very straight. Yeah. High, straight, far, that's what you want. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right, club number two. Okay. Let's go Titleist T300. All 
All right. Thomas, five good ones with the T300. Now, the T300 is at 29 degrees of loft, so a little bit stronger than the G410, but uh, obviously the ball speed jumped a little bit, and that might be part of the reason. Yeah, you mentioned that smash factor when it was like 147, 147, yeah. 147. Yeah. That, that makes sense why it was just a slightly stronger club than the G410 was, one degree stronger. Yeah. So you expect it to go maybe three or four yards further. So. Uh, quickly on look and feel compared to the G410, what do you think? You know, it's a little smaller club head than the G410 for sure. I don't see maybe as much offset looking down at this okay. club. I do notice from kind of like heel to toe, it does look maybe a little bit longer, but from bottom to top, it looks a little bit smaller. Interesting. Okay. Looking down at it, yeah. Yeah, it's a good looking club. It's, huh. in, a, it's in, a, in a little smaller package than maybe that AP1 used to be in. Okay, yeah. sure. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to club number three here. Okay. Next, we can go to TaylorMade Sim. Sim Max. Sim Max, okay. All right, Thomas, the Sim Max Iron. What do you think of that? I know the gain a little bit of distance. Obviously, the loft is a little bit stronger at 28 and a half degrees for the 7 iron. So, what do you think? I was interested because I was not trying to swing harder at it. I did notice that my club speed jumped a little bit. So, yeah. we'll kind of pay attention to that a little, a little bit as we go forward. Um, we noticed my ball speed was a little higher, but smash factor wasn't quite as, mm -hmm. as high as the T300 uh, yeah. before, so it was kind of interesting. We also noticed my dispersion was maybe yeah. just a little bit larger with this one. Um, it felt really solid off the face. I was like, wow, this is going a long way. Um, looks good looking, look, look down at too though. I mean, I must say they have definitely created, you know, with, with the Sim line now, the Sim Max is kind of almost replacing that M5 look. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit sleeker to look down at, sure. um, and more appealing on, on the eye for, for me. Uh, a lot of players obviously don't want to hit massive, big, yeah. clunky clubs at the end of the day. So yeah, it looks really, really good. One of the things that I noticed was, you know, you kind of have been playing a draw so far. You know, obviously starting a little bit right of center, then maybe bringing it back. Yep. A couple of those with the Sim Max kind of stayed out there, and I noticed, you know, look at the curve here on your shots. Yeah, you're right. There's zero curve on, on average there. No, the average curve was nothing. Yep. Yeah, obviously just a little bit with the G410 and the, yeah. and the Titleist, but that's obviously with Game Improvement Club in general, you're not going to be able to work it as much, but it seemed like that sim was just flying quite a bit straighter. Yeah. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind as well. But uh, what do you think in the feel? Because I know that's one thing TaylorMade's big on with their sim max irons is the feel and how they you know, want to feel yeah. like a forged iron. It felt hot. It didn't seem as loud as, say, right. the T300, because that one sounded quite a lot louder. Yeah. So it felt pretty good off the club face. Okay. I don't want it to be crazy loud off, off the face yeah. when I'm hitting a shot. Um, so yeah, it, it felt pretty solid. I, I'm not going to lie. It, it, it's pretty it impressed me for sure. So. Nice. Well, we'll go to the highest lofted uh, model we have here, Shrixon Z585 okay. at 31 degrees. All right, Shrixon Z585, uh, really tight dispersion there, Thomas. That's pretty solid performance there. I think so far those were the five shots in a row that I hit that were almost identical. So yeah. for me, every single time. Didn't go maybe quite as far, um, which I thought was kind of interesting, but it was almost the exact same every single yeah. time. You talked about shot shape with the last club. Well, we noticed I had four that kind of generated that little bit of a draw that I, mm. a lot of viewers would know that I like to play out on yeah. the golf course. So your average here, 11 feet of curve to the left, and I think you just had one that was maybe a tiny, if it was dead straight, or maybe tiny fade, but everything yep. else was, you know, had that solid draw that you like to hit. Um, and this, you know, this model has been on the market for a while, but, you know, I've, no, I've noticed, uh, you know, you said that it's performed really well in fittings, and it's been, you know, a great 
great iron for the game improvement category. So he threw it in and, you know, clearly the performance is pretty solid. And, you know, the fact that it is at 31 degrees aloft is probably why it's not distance wise up here with the sim necessarily, yep. but that dispersion is among the smallest so far. Well, the sim, what's the sim, like 29? 28 and a half. 28 and a half. Max, yeah. So that's essentially a two and a half degree yeah. difference in, in loft there. That's about 10 yards of prop. Yeah. Approximately. So, I mean, that's so kind of what you're looking at here. It, yeah, it was kind of, before, it was keeping up yeah. for sure with regards to, to numbers there. I will obviously bring up that I did hit the AMT white mm -hmm. S300 shaft. Um, it is the exact same, basically the exact same profile as the True Tumba S300 in a seven iron. AMT essentially stands for ascending mass with the sh longer clubs it's going to be lighter with the shorter clubs it's going okay. to be heavier but this is well, that's head to a head. seven iron it's going to be the same head to head is the exact same shaft okay. so for people that may be questioning why i was using this it's the only shaft we had to hit this particular club okay so, perfect yeah. good to know all right we'll move on to the next iron here okay callaway maverick Thanks. Seemed like it was pretty solid. <laughs> yeah, I know. So Thomas, you know, hit five with the Maverick. Um, and I know one thing you noticed was just looking down at it, the size was a little bit bigger than the rest so far. But, um, and this is also the, well, one of the strongest lofts in our test here, the uh, Sim Max OS from TaylorMade, but it's also at 27 degrees. So um, not a terribly, you know, not terribly surprising that you see that circle, the longest one so far in the test. Yeah, I was able to draw it, which was which is nice. So I was able to hit my nice little shape, yeah, which true. what I may not have expected out of a kind of real max kind of game of proven iron. Yeah, I did mention to you while I was hitting, I was like, well, this thing does look a little thicker on the top line, so it is. So looking down, it's probably the largest one that I've looked at so far. Um, there was a couple of shots there when we was like one four nine smash. Yeah, I was like, that is like not possible. <laughs> yeah. So we obviously talked about the loft a little bit so yes it is a little bit stronger loft so when you have last loft on the club there's a chance to increase more ball speed yeah i was swinging the same so i think my club speed was you know right around 91 miles an hour for the most part i'm pretty accurate every so far every single time um but i was getting more ball speed yeah. so that's why the smash mm -hmm. factor was 148 on average i mean that's, yeah. that's on like average 148 with a seven iron is obviously you're not playing a seven iron like this when out on the course but yeah uh, yeah, I've, that's so the Maverick. It's interesting. So we'll get to this also when we hit the other models. But so Taylor made Sim Max OS. They have then then the the Callaway Maverick Max. They had a different philosophy with their iron loft. So Callaway Maverick Max has three degrees more loft yep. on the seven iron, whereas Taylor made Sim uh, Max OS. They actually dropped that loft. So that's a kind of a difference there in their philosophy from Taylor made and Callaway game of proven irons and how to help those golfers get that more. That distance seems like Callaway's going for the launch, whereas TaylorMade's going for the distance. So interesting. We'll see how that tests out here moving forward. But Callaway, I mean, that that circle's pretty tight. You're able to hit the draw, uh, despite kind of the larger club head. Yeah, it was. I mean, numbers-wise, you can't complain with that. I mean, right. across the board, I mean, it's. I'm astonished with how far I'm hitting that thing. I mean, I know. <laughs> Yes, it's got seven iron printed on there, but I know the loft is a little stronger than right. my seven iron would sure. be. All right, we'll move on here to the next club. We'll go Cobra King Speed Zone. Okay. Miss it. But good. You know, yeah. One foot of curve. Yeah. All right. We had that's five with the Cobra Speed Zone. Uh, another pretty good dispersion there, Thomas. Uh, I know you made a comment right away about the look kind of at a dress when you looked on it. Probably due to that carbon fiber top line a little bit as well. But what'd you think? Yeah. So it it actually looks a little sleeker than the last couple of models. Obviously, we came straight from the uh, Callaway. Yeah. 
and that obviously looks a lot larger. Uh -huh. Looking down at this, yes, it looks you know quite significantly smaller looking down. You talked about that kind of carbon fiber on the top. You know, it's very interesting. Yeah, I'm still not sure how I kind of feel about looking down at it, but it, the idea behind it is so you can essentially move that weight lower, right. correct? Yeah, and make it a little bit more forgiving. Yeah. So. Um, I think we noticed, forgiveness-wise, that was obviously important. The last shot I hit, I felt like I didn't quite catch it, and it still carried, I think it still carried like 201. Yeah, I'll look at that up. I mean, you, yeah, there's, there's you smashed the 145, you carried over 200 yards, so I mean, yeah. if you're mishitting shots and carrying, obviously this is with someone of Thomas's club speed, but yeah. it's still pretty impressive. So we should also note the speed zone for loft is at 27 and a half, so uh, that's among the strongest lofts in the test, so it does perform in terms of distance near the top here. But um, I mean, overall, it's still you know you, you had that sim max. You had a couple out here where you yep. missed to the right, and with the speed zone, you know, which is actually um, you had some of those that you know maintained their flight a little bit. I would say. Yeah, I was just kind of, and that last one had one foot of curve to the left, and that's you can't really get straight out of right. that. So it's fine. It was flying pretty straight. If you scroll across to the right, it's two feet of curve to the to the left. So it's pretty minimal. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, pretty so. pretty solid stuff there. Yeah. Two feet of curve there on average. You're yeah. able to draw that Maverick a little bit, but yeah. again, if you're looking for that straight ball flight, which is what the Game Improvement Club is supposed to do, Cobra delivered here at the speed zone. All so. right. All right, next club here we'll go with the Ping G710. Okay, Thomas, that was five pretty good ones there. G710. Now, we did some video testing already with the G710, new in 2020, on the YouTube channel already, and I know you really liked how far you could hit that four iron specifically from that video. Um, and you also like the look. It's kind of that, that black finish, a little bit different than maybe the other ones we're testing here, but look, feel, um, and then performance, what'd you think? It felt like it was the most forgiving club of all the ones that I've yeah. done so far. It, you know, even that last shot that I hit, I know I didn't quite catch it. You'll notice my ball speed and smash factor dropped. So essentially 129, which is quite a lot less than everything else. Yeah. This one knows it carried 197. And that was, I you know, noticed it was a little less than everything else, but I felt like I didn't quite catch yeah. it. And it just gave, the, this club a very forgiving club. Mm -hmm. Just to put it that way. I, yeah. yeah, I mean, your smash there was 1.4, which yeah. obviously is less than your average of 1.44. But yeah. uh, I mean, then, I was mar remarking too that your ball flight the whole time is pretty darn straight. So that's pretty, I mean, it's pretty good stuff from, from Ping and we should expect nothing less. And it's, it's interesting because the differences there from G710 to G410, you got, I think that it seems like that club has to be a little bit bigger. It's got the sort of the hollow body construction of yep. it for the forgiveness, whereas the G410's got that kind of deep cavity. So different ways of achieving the forgiveness, but it still produces and they're both obviously very good in performance there. It is a larger club hand than for example the G410 would be. I can notice that looking down. It's yeah. got a little bit more offset on it as well, but the black sleekness of it I think helps to keep make it a little more appealing on the eye. And I think I touched on the, on the video we did in the past, I had touched on how I like this club face contrast, how it goes yeah. from black to gray to back to black and it really yeah. helps me line that club face up pretty, okay. pretty accurately there too. So I really liked it. Um, I'm still curious about playing something like this as a four iron yeah. after that previous test that we did. Cause yeah, you're hitting that just, thing 250 or whatever it was, 260 yeah. with a dart, you know, straight uh, ball flight. Now we should mention again, this is 29 and a half degrees aloft, G710. Yep. So um, I do think that's in terms of, you know, relative to the rest of these irons, it's actually doing really well for distance there. Cause it's kind of keeping up with some of those that are um, you know, in the 28 to 27 range. So it was, it was definitely keeping up. It was spinning a little bit less than a couple yeah. others there, um, but it was still flying high enough. So it was still getting a decent carry distance out of it. So it was yeah. definitely keeping up. As you mentioned, you've got those three dots there that basically almost carried just as far as those ones that were 27 degrees yeah. aloft. So yeah. that's, yeah, so it, that's pretty solid. Yeah. 
All right, we'll move on here to, how about Mizuno JPX 919 Hot Metal. All right, Thomas, Mizuno JPX 919 Hot Metal. Um, Mizuno is kind of more known for their MP kind of player's irons, but the Hot Metal has been really good for game improvement uh, in that category and for those players. So um, in terms of distance, it's always been great. Obviously, forgiveness as well. What did you think in comparing to the last several models you've hit? Yeah, it was going a little bit shorter. Now the loft on this is also a little bit weaker as well. 30 degrees, correct? Yes. 30 degrees? 30 yeah. degrees. So that, that makes sense why it was going maybe just a little bit shorter than everything else. Now yeah. we're talking, it still was carrying what, on average 190, 196? So yeah. That's still pretty, pretty solid numbers. The one thing I noticed with this one, I feel like I was working a little bit harder to take this thing to turn over. Mm -hmm. I mentioned how, you know, we're testing all standard uh, lie angles across the board right here. I believe Mizuno just sits just a little bit flatter than other models. Okay. So I was just having a hard, harder time trying to get that thing straightened out. And you'll notice I had three out here to the right that were you know, just kind of hovering out the right side. There's a couple I was able to kind of get to turn over, but it just yeah. felt like to me I was working a little bit harder yeah. to get it shaping right to left. Right, I mean, overall, so far, that's the kind of the first one that's averaged. Now, I mean, look at that, a foot <laughs> on average to the right. But, yeah. you know, it's the first one that's stayed out to the right more than, you know, back to the left, so. Yeah. And you do like to hit that draw, so you, you know, your point stands that maybe a little bit open, or a little bit uh, flat, I should say, for the JPX 919 Hot Metal. But what do you think in terms of the look and the feel? Obviously, Mizuno is uh, very well known for uh, the look and feel aspect of their irons. Uh, how did you think the, the Hot Metal compares to what you've hit so far? Yeah, it felt really good. After going straight from the G710 to this, it does look a little bit sleeker. Yeah. Now keep in mind with the Hot Metal, there also is a Hot Metal Pro yeah. that has the same loft on it. It's just in a slightly smaller package, yeah. so that player likes maybe a slightly smaller club that's still relatively forgiving as well. Yeah. So there's kind of two options in this, in this area. Um, for me, I, I like the look of it a lot. For me, I just had a hard time with the, the flat line angle. Yeah. It just felt like it was just, just sitting just a little bit flatter for me, and I know that across the board Mizuno generally has been just a little bit flatter for their standard line sure. goes across the board in general versus other manufacturers. Okay. Good. Well, let's wrap up here. We got a couple more. We got the sort of the larger club heads of Callaway Maverick and TaylorMade Sim Max. So curious to see how those turn out because again, they're the loft difference in philosophy that we kind of talked about earlier. Okay. We'll get into that a little bit more, but let's, uh, let's you got, what, 10 more shots in you? I do, yep, got plenty <laughs> more shots left. I can hit those shots all day. <laughs> okay. So we got Good the Maverick, Maverick Max and TaylorMade Sim Max Sim OS. Max OS. Yeah. Okay. Thomas, Callaway Maverick Max, five shots. Uh, I know you said that the standard Maverick was a little bit large in the club head, and obviously now that's the Maverick Max is a little bit larger, so probably, I know that's for sure one of the takeaways you have, probably. Yeah, definitely is larger. It's yeah. probably, yeah, definitely the largest club that I've probably looked at today, along with maybe the G710, those okay. two, kind of your, kind of your absolute max kind of game improvement irons, what I would consider. Um, the takeaway for me was, I think those are the best five swings in the day that I put on this thing. Really? So loft is your friend. Yeah. So I know what's unique with the Maverick Max is there are more game improvement iron for Kelly this year. They actually they switched flip flopped it. So there's more loft on the seven yeah. iron than their just their Maverick iron. Yeah. Um, what you'll notice if you look at the screen here is that that white circle. Notice how small that circle was and yeah. how consistent it was. Mm -hmm. So every single time I basically had that gentle little kind of drawer I think every single shot that I hit with it yeah was the exact same thing so yeah. that really really surprised me actually um, the other piece also was I 
feel like it flew just slightly higher than all the other models as well too. Yeah. Um, once again, in terms of height here, it was the highest one. You know, average over 130. None of the rest of them, I believe, got their oh T300. T300 was, was close. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in terms of loft too, you know, you're at 30 degrees. Um, looking back, you know, it's not definitely not the highest loft of, you know, the 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 set so far that we've tested, and it did fly the highest for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. I. This presented confidence. Obviously, I don't need to probably play in, the, in this category, but if I was trying to fit a player into a club and it needs a lot of confidence to get the ball up in the air, I would, you know, I think I'm on board with Callaway how they kind of flip flop the lofts there. Huh, interesting. They're not so much focusing on trying to get as much distance as they can by turning that loft down, they actually you know, add a little loft to it. So, yeah, just yeah. helping the ball, the ball get into the air, right? That's yep. a lot of the problem with some of those mid die handicappers just getting the ball in the air and then obviously with the way the club's constructed the ball's going to fly straight so uh yeah now we can kind of transition then to sort of tailor-made's philosophy where their sim max os that's the last iron will test they actually decrease the loft going for distance there for those uh that kind of max like you like to say the max game improvement iron yep sounds good All right, Thomas, that's 50 golf swings. Uh, TaylorMade SimMax OS, what'd you think of that? Uh, again, you know, I, it seemed just by my perspective that you had, you had a lot more draw there, which uh, not as much on the other game improvement irons there. There were a couple of shots that did definitely did curve, curve a lot from right, right to left. Um, when, when you're hitting the ball further, it's got more of a chance to get offline. Sure. So with this having probably the strongest loft out of them all, it's yeah. going to go a little bit further overall, um, and it's, you know, it's got a chance to curve more as well. Yeah. Although in saying that, there was one shot that I did hit with this club that had zero feet of curve on it yeah. as well. I think it was like the third shot that I might, might yeah. have hit um, that did no curve on it. And this one, obviously, the last one I hit was pretty good as well. But you'll notice, yeah, there was a couple that did go a little bit further left. Um, but with regards to distance, it was... That was yeah, pretty accurate. And look at the curve. I mean, overall, uh, averaging all of them 25 feet left. Uh, obviously, that those two over here kind of, you know, are a big part of that. But distance-wise, it kind of kept up with what it should given the loft. So um, now, kind of, we can really get into the data here because we got some really small circles up there to look at. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at the Maverick Max in particular there, but uh, we can really dive into the kind of the performance differences here. So let's get to it, huh? Let's take a look. All right, Thomas, you just hit 50 shots. Now we're kind of, we're going to go to you for the fitter insight here uh, to kind of break down all this data. It's a lot of, you know, numbers and circles and dots to look at, but uh, tell me what you can, you know, take away from all those shots. Yeah, so if we kind of work our way kind of left to right, I just want to take a dive into the numbers. The first thing I noticed, my club speed was plus or minus about two miles an hour. So yeah. the first two I was hitting were about 90 and a half miles an hour, and then got up to about 92.5. So I did a very good job of keeping that club speed the same for all 50 golf yeah. shots. Um, now obviously the most more reliable data would be the actual smash factor number. That way we know which one yeah. actually is performing the most out of, out of them all. Um, one thing we'll keep in mind is when the loft is stronger, that smash factor number is going to be yeah. higher versus mm -hmm. uh, the higher loft. Um, but let's just take a look and see. So, ball speed, 136.6 with the Sim OS. Um, I want to see if there was anything higher than that, and there was not. So, that club gave us the highest ball speed out of them all. It was also the, the uh, strongest loft, or it was one well, of the strongest lofts. There was a couple of 27 degrees, and, and that was one of them. So. It was also the strongest loft. The Callaway Maverick 135.1 was the second highest for regards to yeah. uh, ball speed, and that was also at 27, 27 degrees of loft. So the smash factor, 148, and 148 with the TaylorMade Sim OS, and the, Taylor, and the Callaway Maverick, those two were the most efficient when it came to smash factor. Okay. Um, 
and we're talking across the board very very good smash factor numbers for, for the most part um, the speed zone is the next I believe in line with the strongest in mm -hmm. loft and we had yeah. a 1.47 smash factor and so that was very very close in performance as well um, 147 with the T300 what's the loft on the T300 that's that's at 29 degrees, so, so that's, that's yeah. pretty impressive to have that up, up at 147, considering so, that the other lofts are a lot lower than that. Yes, it's really interesting. The T300 was at 147, and considering it's a slightly weaker loft of club, mm -hmm. it's about two degrees weaker. So very impressive that the ball speed we were getting with that club. I didn't swing as hard with the Titleist T300, but the efficiency was very, very good. Mm -hmm. So that's important to note. Um, we'll pay attention to the dispersion circles a little bit later, yeah. but I know that that dispersion with that club was also pretty solid as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so jumping to launch angle, launch angle ranged from about 16.6 to... To 20, I think there to, was one up there, 20. It was 20. I'm going to guess maybe Maverick the Maverick Max. Max. Yeah, the Maverick Max. Um, Maverick Max, remember they kind of flip-flopped this year. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about these kind of last two clubs that we hit, we saved. The Maverick Max actually has more loft on the club than the Sim OS, mm -hmm. considering they're both their kind of their Max game improvement irons. So you can see the difference in launch angle there between those two. Um, and no surprise it's separated by that much. Um, also interesting that the spin rate was yeah, a little bit higher with the Maverick Max versus the yeah. Sim OS. Typically, when you see more loft, it's going to spin a little bit more. So interesting across the board. For the most part, my launch angle is going to be pretty consistent across the board. Yeah. My swing is pretty repetitive. Okay, so spin rate. So we will notice the low spin rates on these clubs. So typically, my 7-iron spin is right around about 5,800 to 6,000 RPMs. So we will notice we're kind of ranging from, I think it's a 45, 4,300 to about 5,000 RPMs. Just like with the ball speed number, when you have less loft on a golf club, it's going to spin less. Sure. So that's why we're just seeing that spin rate number, you know, a little bit less. I like to hit a draw most of the time, so when you do draw the ball, it's going to spin a little bit less as mm -hmm. well. But because I was hitting the ball very high, you'll notice the difference between the carry and total distance was pretty efficient. So yeah. I was stopping it between kind of seven and 10 yards with every single club. Yep. So my landing angle was, was around about 50 degrees with all of them there. Yeah. So I have a lot of mm -hmm. ability to stop the ball. Now I don't fit into playing this type of club. It's important to keep in mind that these clubs are designed to fly a little bit higher, launch yeah. a little higher especially. Um, so that's why that, that uh, landing angle might be a little bit higher than 50, which is kind of where you want to be. 45 to 50 probably is right where you'd want to be with a 7 iron, something like there. I like to see a, a landing angle of at least about 45 degrees. If it starts dropping below 45 or below 40, that's when you may consider playing a hybrid with your, okay. with your clubs. Or you know, if you're not generating enough speed, it's never going to get that chance to get up and, and, sure. and drop there. So. That's why I, I like 45. 45 is kind of okay. a good number with, with a 7 iron. Um, I mentioned earlier that the Maverick Max did fly the highest. That was 133 mm -hmm. feet in the air. I think Callaway's done a great job with the Maverick Max, of giving a little more, a lot more loft, maybe a little more confidence, and also you know, a more forgiving club head for those players that need a little help getting the ball in the air. Yeah. We noticed if I jump over to this dispersion pattern, this white circle here, that was the Callaway Maverick Max, how consistent yeah. that was. I think that was the most consistent club that I hit out of the there too. So yeah, it wasn't going quite as far, but it was getting up in the air, carrying, yeah. and giving stopping power. I mean, one thing to note, too, there are five shots in that circle. It looks <laughs> like there's four, but that's just because there's two right on top of each other. Yeah. So that's actually five shots because uh, there's five shots with every club, but it's just it's just funny that it looks like four because you hit two that were basically the same exact shot. So <laughs> again, that's just the consistency of the Maverick Max there with yeah. the highest shot. It's gonna, you know, fly the straightest as well when you're able to have that more, that, you know, added loft. Yeah. You're gonna, you know, have uh, less tendency to spray it one way or the other. And I think that shows here with the Maverick Max. I know it's hard to see. There are two white circles here. Yeah. Uh, with TrackMan, I think they limit to about eight different colors. Yeah. So the last two, we're going to have a couple of 
carry over on, on right. colors. So the, yeah, so the, the other white one is G410, yep. and then you have two yellows with the Tim, uh, the uh, Sim Max OS, which was that larger yellow circle up top, and then the T300, yep. uh, which is the, kind of the smaller yellow circle there in the middle. But yep. uh, yeah, I mean, looking at the dispersion maps, Thomas, what did you what are you taking away from? Obviously, I think Callaway, both Maverick and Maverick Max, have performed pretty well there too. They have. Um, so the Callaway and Maverick Max, I touched on that. That is the smallest circle. Obviously, not going quite as far as a couple of the others because it's got more loft on it. But then the Callaway Maverick, which has a little bit less loft on it, would notice pretty good circle right in the middle, further up the screen. So you can't complain with that either. Mm -hmm. So they both perform really, very really well. I, I was able to hit the, the Maverick far and straight. So yeah. Callaway's done pretty well in this test, I'm not gonna lie. Um, now keep in mind, I didn't take any shots out. So there is probably gonna be the occasional outlier in, mm -hmm. in each. Um, so for example, Ping G410 was the first time we, that we hit. You'll notice I have this one over here to the right. Um, that I would consider more of an outlier because all the others were kind of more sure. in the middle. So the Ping G410 with regards to consistency was very, very good as well. Um, and that was also the first club that we did hit too. So I wasn't quite swinging quite as hard with that club there, yeah. but it was very, very, very accurate there mm -hmm. too with those four shots, so that's yeah. important to note. The Shrikson circle is pretty tight there too. And then I know one thing you mentioned, um, with the Mizuno again, the, hot, the JPX 919 hot metal sitting a little bit open perhaps, or at least not open, but uh, flat at a dress, and that has a circle a little bit with uh, maybe a right tendency there, a little bit more shots that are right of center there. But um, I mean, all these circles are, tr are great, right? I mean, you have, it, it's either really tight or you have a little bit farther distance, and you know then you can expand a little bit, but you get the added 20 yards of distance. now. The tailor-made Sim Max, uh, not the OS, the standard Sim Max there. Uh, a little bit wider circle there. You had a couple that you left out to the right. Uh, but I think overall, you know, it's it's great stuff. And again, that tailor-made Sim Max OS also delivered in distance too. So um, yeah, I mean, this is it's really great stuff here. And again, the, all these irons are great game improvement options for golfers who are looking for maybe that extra launch help or and we do want an extra 10, 15 yards out of each of their irons. Because like, you, I mean, your average seven iron is about what, 175, 180 probably. And you're hitting some of these, you know, 20 plus yards further than that. Yeah, I normally carry my seven iron 178 to 180. So you'll notice it has gone quite a lot further. Yeah. Um, if we look here, you did mention Strixon Z585, very good dispersion circle there also, very similar to, um, what we're seeing with the Callaway Maverick Max, uh, very, very similar numbers. Yeah. Um, I didn't touch on Cobra Speed Zone, I wanted to touch on that. Oh, notice that was also very good with regards to dispersion as well, pretty far up there. Yeah. So yeah if you look good. at that, combine the distance and the dispersion, that's a pretty darn good performance too, because that circle, is, while it's a little bit larger than, say, the Maverick Max, it is, you know, 15 ish yards further on carry distance. You know, they carried all of those over 200 yards and that circle is still pretty tight there. Yeah, I think, I think the takeaway is, you know, all these models, they, yeah, they're a little bit more forgiving, so it's gonna be easier for me to you know, generate a little bit tighter dispersion circles. And that's why it's important for you to discuss with your fitter, you know, what your playing ability is, what you're trying to achieve out of your irons, whether you wanna play a club that's a little more workable, or if you just wanna try and hit the ball straight. And, and this category is designed for that player that wants to just hit the ball a little higher and straight and just to be forgiving. Yeah, and you know, one thing we also want to touch on too is that a lot of this is about you know what you like to look at at the dress. You know, like even the G710 has got that black finish, and you mentioned how the contrast from the gray kind of grooves on the face uh, to sort of the black club head finish. Um, you know, you have a lot of chrome finishes in the in the design. We also have thicker club heads, kind of more smaller ones like the T300. So. A lot of it just depends on what the player likes too, because you know the performance here. There are some differences for sure, uh, but I think it's more you know more important for the, the player to be confident at address. You know they know they're gonna hit a great shot with that iron that they see in front of or behind the golf ball. Excuse me. So a lot of great options again. That's ten really good game improvement irons. Thomas just hit 50 shots to kind of explain the differences, and uh, again it, it comes down to coming into a second swing store or calling one of our online fitters to uh, get custom fit for yourself to see which model might be best for your game. So Thomas, thanks for joining us, hitting all those shots for us and explaining the data.
Not a problem.